Okay, hi and welcome to today's English class. Hi to Dickerson, Franco and Eloise. You guys are with us online. I hope you guys are well. Hi, teacher. Hey, good you got the link. Hello, teacher. Hey, Dickerson. And Franco. And to Fo, the only one in class today. I don't know why. Where is everyone? So let's talk about what we've been doing. We know that we have been looking at possessions, objects and things that we own. And we know how to talk about, to say what there is or what there are, if it's plural, and its place. You know, like, where is it? Is it next to the window? Is it under the desk? Is it next to, you know, this is in a classroom, but imagine you're on the street. You could say, well, it's next to the bank. Um, you know, the restaurant is across the road from my home. Then we looked at, that was called preposition of place. We looked at global objects. We used the Mini, if you remember, um, the car by BMW now. And uh, it is, you know, all the parts that come from around the world, global objects. You then also did a presentation where you showed us an object and you were able to do a presentation with your group. Then we went shopping, we went to the mall. We were able to talk about money and the price of something. We know how to say how much something costs correctly. Um, we know how to talk about the currencies. In Australia, we use the Australian dollar, but in other countries, they have a different currency. So we know about that. We know about expressions. We know how to say what we want, what we need, what are we looking for? Um, and ask questions. Maybe the salesperson or the store person gives us some information. We need to respond and say, maybe we want a different color or a different size. Um, so we looked at the conversations that we can have when we go to the mall. So then we looked at, we don't want to keep repeating the noun, you know, the object that we want. Maybe I want, you know, a phone. I don't want to keep saying, I want a phone, I want a phone. Um, I want a black phone, I want the latest phone, I want the latest model. So we can use the words one to replace it. Like I want one that is uh, by Apple. I want one that is um, the latest edition. I want one that is around, you know, $800. So we looked at using one and ones. So you should know how to use those words and why we need to use them. Um, so today we are going to be uh, doing an advertisement. We're going to write about something that we want to sell. So we need to add information and details about what object, what possession, what thing do we want to sell. So let's look um, at that. Let's make sure that we can um, make a great advertisement because you will need to sell something um, in your life. So we can see here, um, I just wanted to talk about the grammar first. So when you have the noun, that's the object that you want to sell. So maybe it's a book. You want to sell your book. We must put the adjective before. So the adjective is words like, you know, is it a big book? Is it um, an old book? Is it um, a religious book? Is it a history book? Um, is it um, a very beautiful covered book. Um, so always put the adjective before the noun. Before the noun. Now, um, some things that we, if we have a look at some advertisements here, as example, we can see that we must have a title. So you must say what it is that you want to sell. And be clear, this one says computer desk and chair. And there's an image so we can the people can see what you want to sell. Now, this advertisement, they used to be on a piece of paper on the board somewhere. But now we use Facebook Market, we use Gumtree, we use lots of social media. Um, we just make a post about what we want to sell. But the same thing, we need to have a title. This one says car for sale. And there's a picture. And rucksack for sale. Rucksack, remember, is similar to a backpack. 
So you must put the price. This one says, yes, it's only five pounds. The car does not say the price. So maybe someone needs to call and ask that question. And the rucksack, there's no price. So the first one, yes, has a price. And as a rule, it is good to put the price because then you don't get people calling you and wasting your time by saying, how much is it? So if you put the price, people know and they can say, yes, that's good because I have the money or no, it's too much. So this one is for furniture, computer and chairs. We talked about furniture um, for office, in your home, um, in a dentist space, uh, at your doctor's office. So you can get lots of furniture um, for different types of businesses or use. Um, is it for an old product? Yes. So product just means item or object. So yes, this is a car for sale. And it's an old car because it says um, 1965. So I know it's a, it's not a new car, it's an old car. And the rucksack never used. So that means it's new, it's brand new. So they're the same words, never used, brand new, hardly used, they're all the same. That means it has not been used, it's like new. And is it something nearly new? Yes, that would be the rucksack. Okay, so we can just see from those examples um, what someone wants to sell. Now we can see not just what they want to sell and details, but there must be a phone number. How can I call that person or email them or whatever? How can I get in touch with them? How can I contact them? So very simple, call this number today, email this email. So you must put your contact details, maybe your name. If you want, you can put your name, contact details. Now, one important thing is with advertisements, keep it simple. It shouldn't be long sentences. It really must be, you know, the title must be large and stand out. And then there must be an image that's quite big because you don't want people, you just want to quickly catch someone's attention. And then if they're interested, because they see the picture of the car, they will then read more information about it. And you don't want sentences like, I have a car for sale. Too many wasted, unnecessary words. Just say car for sale, um, red, white, blue, British car, BMW, whatever, from um, 2011 you know, um, recent service, new tires, whatever. You just want quick, fast information on your ad, not long sentences. This is not a writing. It's an advertisement. Okay, so um, let's look at um, some vocabulary to do with um, adjectives about the thing that we're selling. So um, we know that the opposite of old is modern or new. Bad, if something is bad, the opposite word adjective is good. It's good. It's working. It's perfect. It's, um, it's uh, yeah, it's good. It's fantastic, whatever it is that you're selling. If something is useless, the opposite word is useful. It's handy. That means I can use it. it. It has use. I can use it. If something is slow, the opposite word would be fast or quick or speedy. If something is small, then the opposite word could be large, big, huge. If something is expensive, the opposite word is it's cheap. It's inexpensive. Okay, so now we can um, we can make sentences like this. The noun is adjective. So, for example, the car is brand new. The house is big. Um, the phone is 
an iPhone. The, fi the phone is um, two years old. The phone is black. Okay, so we, we can make a sentence like that, or we can say it's an adjective noun. So it's a blue book, um, it's a Mercedes car, um, it's a three-seater couch, um, it's, it's a black Nike top. Okay, so I can make sentences like that. Or if it's plural, if I'm maybe selling more than one thing, I say they are adjective nouns. So, you know, they are brand new shoes. Um, they are black Adidas shoes, um, something like that. Um, in number three, it's an old car. Okay, so I'm selling an old car. It's an old car, singular, only one. So make sure all your grammar connects. It's an, because we've got an adjective that starts with a vowel, A-E-I-O-U. So it's an old car. Um, they're slow laptops. So plural, I can see my noun has an S and then R. Remember from the verb to be, um, and they are. They are slow laptops but I'm selling them. It's a brown sofa. Okay, sofa, couch, same words. I'm selling a brown sofa. It's a brown sofa. So the title, brown sofa for sale. You have to have an interesting title. Uh, they're useful shelves. So maybe you want to sell a bookcase where you put your books. And you can say, you know, they're useful. You can use it. Um, you can put your books in there. You can put many other things like candles and um, whatever. It's useful. You can do something with it. Okay, let's read the advertisements again. So if you remember, we had um, the one about the computer desk and chair. We had the car for sale and then we had the rucksack. So usually when I give information about the object, I can put an opinion first, the size, the age, the color, the nationality, and then the noun. It's nice to kind of go in this order. So, for example, it's a useful, that's an opinion because that's what I think. It's good. It's useful. Um, it's bad. That's an opinion, what I think. Uh, modern, modern would be the age. White would be the color. Desk is the noun. Okay, you don't have to add all of them, but that's the order. So start with, if you need an opinion first, size, age, color, nationality. If we look at um, the BMW or the Mini, sorry, it's 1965. It's a 1965 red, white, and blue. So I've got the age. Red, white, and blue, the color. British Mini, that's the nationality. Where is the object from? You know, you have a lot of objects that say made in China. Um, if it's a car, especially, we say where it's from. You know, it's a French car. It's a British car, German car. So British Mini. And the noun was Mini. And new engine, um, that was... That's a noun as well, engine, and an adjective, new. If we looked at the backpack or the rucksack, good for camping, that's an opinion. That's what I think. It's good for camping. It's good for hiking. Size, large. I could say if it's large, medium, it's small, it's extra small. Never used. That's the age. So remember, if something is new, brand new, hardly used, never used, like new. The color, it's green, whatever, green and white. Um, and the noun, rucksack. Okay, so that's how I give information about the noun in my advertisement. You can see they are not long sentences. You're adding an opinion, comma, size, comma, age, comma, color, comma, nationality, and noun.
So has anyone sold anything before? Franco, Eloise, Valeria, Dickerson, did you ever, when you were in Australia, um, sell anything? Maybe you needed to sell some furniture because you were moving to a different place or maybe you were selling your old phone because you wanted a new one. Did you sell something? No, no? yet. Yeah? What did you sell? No, yet, but... Not yet? Would you like a scooter? But what? Would you like a scooter? Ah, <laughs> um, is it is it new? Is it quite new? No, it's twelve years. Oh, it's a twelve-year-old scooter. Um, what color is it? It's gray. Red, and does it work well? What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> has some problems. That's related, but <laughs> I know, yeah. Okay. Have a problem with the brakes, but it's ah, okay. Okay. And um, is it like a big scooter, small scooter? 125. Normal. Ah, so the speed of it? I or don't size? know. The, the, I don't know if it's the size or what, but it's yeah. the size of the motor, maybe. Maybe, yes. Yeah. Okay. And um, there you go. So that was a good example. Thanks for telling, uh, asking me if I needed a scooter. So that's how Franco answered it very well. When I asked questions, he was able to give me details about a scooter that he wants to sell. So it's like a motorbike. Um, there you go. So <laughs> if I know someone that wants a scooter, I will tell you. So maybe you'll sell your scooter. Very, very cheap. Very cheap. I was going to say, what's the price? How much? Uh, 1.5k, 1. 1. maybe. No, how much money? How much do you want for the scooter? 105,000. One, $105,000? Yeah. That's a lot. Are you sure? You mean, you mean $105? It's too much. For a scooter? Uh, uh, do you do you call a scooter here uh, to the monopatine with engine? Yeah. It's a motor right then. Ah, send an image if you can. Because, uh, yeah, it's good if I can see an image. So you want with it a hundred and... $5,000, did you say? Yeah. Okay. okay are, you, are you negotiable? Will you take a near offer? No, I think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, so that's good. So there was an example of me trying to negotiate with Franco. So what I asked him is, oh, are you willing to drop the price? Are you willing to negotiate? Can you make it cheaper? And then Franco said, no, it's a fixed price. So when we have a fixed price, that means that that's the price. I'm not going to change it. It's fixed. So I'll just write that for you because that's a very good word, fixed price. So you can always write that on your advertisement. So, for example, Franco would write fixed price. That means that's it. He wants that price and nothing less. Now, the other word, the opposite word, is um, negotiable. Now, negotiable means that or, actually, negotiable or near offer. That means that I'm willing, you know, to negotiate with you. I can drop the price. We can make a deal. That's what it means. So if Franco said he wants $105,000, and he said, yes, it's negotiable or yes, I accept near offer. And I say, okay, uh, 100000 So that's near because it's close to the price. Okay, so that's one way of saying to someone if you, if you want to negotiate or the opposite would be no, fixed price. I'm not going to accept anything less. So usually you'd have the price. You'd say what the price is. 
um, in your advertisement. So for example, $100 fixed price or $100 negotiable or near offer. Okay, so make sure you also add that information about the price, but not just how much you want for it, but is it fixed or is it negotiable? Are you willing to change the price for someone? Because usually people like to get a deal. You know, we always ask someone, oh, can you do it a, a little bit cheaper? Um, so that's very common. Okay, so thanks for sharing that, Franco. And if you have an image, do send. Okay, so let's look at question five. We have to make these sentences. Um, they did the first one for us. It's a fast new Japanese motor, motorbike. So you can see fast, new, that's its age, Japanese, nationality, um, motorbike, the noun. And fast was the the opinion. Number two, their lovely red gloves, gloves that you wear on your hands, their lovely red gloves. So that's the noun at the end and all your adjectives before it. And remember, this was how we can talk about it, their lovely red gloves. Now, in an advertisement, you would just write lovely red gloves for sale. You can give more information. Um, medium sized or lovely medium sized German made red gloves. Okay, so you can add as much detail as you want. It's especially the most important detail. You know, someone's going to ask you what size, what color, um, like what I did with Franco in the exercise. I wanted to know details about the scooter. You know, what year is it? Is it good? Is the engine working? Is there any issues? A lot of people, if it's something te technology, they'll ask, is there any problems? Is there any issues with it? And that's when Franco said, no, not really. It's pretty good. Maybe the brakes, you know, need to change, but really it runs very good. It's very good. Number three, there are two beautiful old Italian chairs for sale. Okay, so now we have a number because it's plural. So you can say how many. Um, you can say as a sentence when I'm speaking, I have five, whatever, how many you have. If it's an advertisement, remember, we just say two, beautiful. Beautiful is the opinion. Old is the age. Italian is the nationality because it's important to say where it's made um, because this has value. Italian is very... It means it's very good quality. Chairs is the noun for sale. A nice small gray computer desk for sale. Nice is an opinion. Small is the size. Gray is the color. Computer desk is the noun for sale. So that sounds like a title. And the last one for sale, a large modern white house now you can put the word for sale at the beginning or at the end doesn't matter and we can see a so we know we're talking about one object large is the size modern is the age so with age you've got words like um it's old it's ancient it's modern it's new it's a few years old like what Franco said, he said it's 12 years old. You can even say how old it is or a decade old. White is the color, house is the noun. Okay, so that's talking about advertisements when we want to, or adverts or ads. So when we want to sell something. So now you're going to write your own advertisement. So think of something, it could be something real, like Franco said, his scooter. You can use that as a good example. Um, now you're going to draw a picture, you're going to write, have a big heading, make it really interesting. Okay, so if you remember, we were writing a for sale advertisement or advert. And as I said a long time ago, we used to put them on a community board. Now with social media, we can post it 
on Facebook for our friends to see, on whatever social media, because we have something, we want to sell it. We don't want it anymore. So you had to write an advert, advertisement, ad, all the same words. So Franco has this one, new car. So good, I like the title. It's very, it catches my eye quickly because if someone is looking for a new car, they are going to quickly say, oh, wow, and then they're going to start reading more. And I like these little images here, dot, dot, dot. Did you use CapCut? I used Canva, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, Canva, yes. So new black Mercedes, we don't say on sale, for sale. Style and comfort, elegant. Yeah, so you maybe can say sentences like, uh, I'm trying to see where I can respond. Um, I'll just write it in the chat box. So I would say um, new car, new black Mercedes. So for, so make sure it says for um, sale. And then I would say style and comfort. I would say stylish, comfortable, and comfortable yet elegant. So stylish, comfortable, yet elegant. So it means or oh, stylish, comfortable, and elegant. So I would probably add that. Um, style and comfort, elegant, because you've got adjectives, so you can't put you always have to put comma, comma, comma until you get to the last adjective. You say and because these are all adjectives, stylish. That means like it just looks really great. It has a good style. It's, you know, comfortable. Um, like it's comfortable. I can sit in it. I can drive it. It feels good. The seats are really spacious. It's comfortable and elegant, elegant. Like it's it gives you a good um, impression for other people. The car of your dreams. I like that. He's trying to put um, some words to make you want to, to think, yes, the car of your dreams. Nice. That's a good um, phrase. I like this. Don't doubt, just call us. And then there's a phone number. Now in Australia, we make it easier. We put 0493. Um, and then I would put a space. Then we put the next three numbers, six, nine, eight, space, eight, three, four. So anytime you need to give your number, your mobile phone number in Australia, it's good to put a space exactly where I put the space, even if it's in your email, even if it's a text message back to someone to say, um, okay, can you please call me on this number or on an advertisement or wherever. Anytime you need to give someone your number, Put the spaces exactly where I put them. So the first four number, space, three numbers, space, last three numbers. And the way that we say our phone number is like this, 0493, and then we pause, 698, pause, 834. So that's very common. It's easy for someone to see the number, and then that's how we say it. So we even put a pause where the space is. Okay, good. Um, I don't see a price. I want to know, maybe I think you could add a price. What's your price? Uh, Franco? I don't know. Generally. Um, Because it's a new car. I would put maybe like, let's just say 150,000, so K. So make sure you add 150K. Do you want to negotiate or not? For that price, no. <laughs> okay, so I would write, so 150K, make sure it's a capital K, um, K uh, fixed. Okay, so I would add those details, just change um, a little bit of those information. And then that's a perfect advertisement for brand new car, new car. 
maybe I would take off the, the second new here too many times. I would say new car and the sentence starts with black Mercedes for sale. So I would change, you don't need to write two times um, for uh, two times uh, new. So I would say black Mercedes uh, for sale. It's interesting. You didn't have, no, it's okay because it's new. I was going to say the year, but new is the year. So make sure I would do those changes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for sharing. Okay. Um, yes. So you can do it and then upload it again. Next one, we have an advertisement. Who else has uploaded? I think. No one else is uploaded, but I have one from, um, I have one from Eloise. So Eloise says, uh, red earrings for sale. Now in your title, you must have capital letters. So I would take off the adjective. You don't really want to add adjectives in your title. Um, Franco's was a bit different because he was trying to catch you. Um, so he said, you know, new car. But this is different. I would just say earrings for. So make sure, as you could see, earrings for sale. So the capital letter of the words, um, of the first letter of the word. So I think the title should be Earrings for Sales. Then I would put the description. Tell us information about it, your adjective. So red, um, drop, shape. I like that. So you're telling me what shape it is, Dro drop, shaped. crystal and green stone. So red, um, we call it teardrop, tear, I think more teardrop, 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 um, red teardrop, crystal and green stones. Okay, so that should be your next sentence. Make sure, again, the first part is a capital letter, and I would put the adjective there. And then eternal guarantee. I like that. So that means that forever these are going to stay in good condition. And then for just uh, $49.90, maybe I would take off four, and I would put only... Because, uh, again, you want to put less words, 49.90. So, sorry, I've been sending all of this to Franco. Let me, um, so I would put those information, only 49.90. Only is more quick word to grab someone. Only 49.90, you know. Cool, I like the little emo um, cool emoji. Cool, O2. Um, yep. Yeah. So it looks like this is maybe a business number. So again, uh, let's just practice mobile phones. So 04, I'm just going to make it up 0402 09 Okay. So we put, make sure you put call this number. Yeah. From Monday to Saturday. Now, again, make sure the first letter is a capital. So from, just to make it short, Monday to Saturday. I would put that. So we can shorten the days of the week, Monday, M-O-N. And then you put that dash. That means to Saturday, S-A-T. And good, she's got the name of the company. So I like that. And the image, perfect. Now, if you want all of these writing, I don't know if you've got, you can change it, but you can put them different, different angle. You can put writing, you know, different. Uh, it doesn't all have to be like from top to bottom. You can change the angle, put something there. Okay, good. So, Eloise, make sure you can change 
if you can, and then send it back to me. Okay, and Franco, your information as well. Um, I'll just... Thank you, teacher. No worries. Um, and this was Franco's... <clears throat> So this was the information we had for Franco. Okay, good. Anyone else uploaded? Uh, Dickerson, Valeria. Okay, so now we're going to look at watching a video and answering some questions. We have this saying in English, a picture is worth a thousand words. And this means that if you have an image, that image can tell you more than if you just write. So a picture really is very important, especially when you take a picture when you're on your trip. It shows so much. It shows what's going on. Or if you take a picture of someone, we can see their expression, what they look like. We can even tell, you know, how someone is feeling from a picture. So a picture gives us more information than if we read, read, read. So that's what the saying is. So we can see here that um, there's a photo of someone taking a photo of a man and he's, in a tr he's on a train, maybe he's on a bus stop. Um, we want to know. We're going to watch a video and it's going to tell us where is this man, why is he there, and who has the photo on the screen. So let's watch this video and answer some of these questions.
we've got this um, question here. So we're going to watch the video one more time. Um, I think we'll come back if we, if we have time. This is a better exercise. So I'm going to jump to number eight, but we'll come back if we have time. So uh, I have the post here. Okay, this one here. Okay, so I've pinned it to the top. Now, I'll, we'll watch the video one more time. No worries, Franco. See you tomorrow. And if you want to do the exercise, uh, I don't know if you're still here. It's this one. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> let's watch the video one more time. And then you're going to create the ending to the movie. S similar conversation like the one I showed you. So let's watch the video one more time and then create a conversation. Okay, so ready?
Okay, so that is the movie. Now you are going to write, as I said, your own conversation. So now she has her package and she opens it up and her camera is inside and she sees that he um, has his phone number. So she wants to call him and she wants to say thank you. Now you can make a story. Maybe he asks her out because he's interested. Um <clears throat> You know, maybe um, something, whatever story you want to create. Um, I do have some more examples up here so you can read. Uh, this one Adriano wrote. So he says, I'll just read one more for practice. So, hi, I'm Nita. I wanted to say thanks for returning my camera. You're welcome. I looked for you at your apartment, but I couldn't find you. That's why I sent your camera with my number. Nice. I'd like to thank you in person, but I'm in Boston right now. Yes, I saw in that your I saw that in your pics. Do you have any free time to talk? Sure, maybe this weekend. Okay, I will call you then. Perfect. I'll be waiting. See you. Okay, so that's another example. Uh, upload your phone conversations here, and we'll have a look at them. Okay, so Eloise writes, um, she's got the man, he answers the phone, so he says hello, and the woman says, hi, you managed to find me, and the man says, yes, so he must say yes or no first, and that's really good, you managed to find me, I like that, um, that's perfect, that's like her saying, you know, you, you you got my address, you found me. So she's good, really good excitement there. And the man says, yes, I looked at the photos. So I might say you're here. I looked at your photos and followed the trips to find you. Uh, the tips maybe and followed the hints to find you. So a hint is like a little guess. Someone can you know, tell you something, but they want you to really think about it and find out for yourself. So a hint is like, I'm giving you a little bit of information, but you need to find out more. So, and followed the hints to find you. The woman then says, you were, you were smart. Were is in the past, so maybe you are, you are so smart bit more casual you are so smart another way to say that is um oh you are so like what a good idea you are so um like yeah like how how good like wow the man says i would like to meet you i will go um i will be when we're at a place in the future we will say i will be in boston next weekend or next week sorry next week and the man says i think that's continued from the man i'll be in weekend um i will be in boston next week um do you wanna i think it's a bit of a nice casual way do you wanna have coffee we don't need to say a coffee just do you want to have coffee Maybe he can put here, so do you want to have coffee? So nice, casual conversation. And the woman says, again, you need to say yes or no. So yes, I would love to. Or we could also say, yes, I would love that. And then the man says, okay. 
So again, a bit of these natural expressions like, okay, well, so, okay, I'm happy that I will see you again. Um, happy, maybe a bit more casual and common language is, okay, I'm glad that I will see you again. Now, he hasn't seen her before. So I'm going to take off again because he's never seen her before. You can't say to see you again. Um, so just, okay, I'm glad, I'm glad I will see you. I'm glad I will see you. And the woman says, me too. See you soon. Perfect. Me too. Can't wait. See you soon. Um, really good. Thank you, Eloise. I will send that back to you. <clears throat> Um, so thank you for your writing. Thank you, teacher. No worries. I've sent that to you in the chat. Okay. Really good. I like the, I like the beginning. You managed to find me like really good. Okay. So from Eloise, um, I see Fo that you have, uh, sent in yours. So let's have a look. Um, oh, Dickerson. Let's do Dickerson. Okay, good. Let's see. Okay, hi. The man says hi. The woman says hello. You are the boy on the train. Uh, we say guy. Boy is more for like a little boy. So you are the guy on the train. Is it? I don't know if it's a question. Many pleasures. I am Nassim. Um. I think it's a bit confusing, this sentence. So, uh, hi, um, you are the guy on the train that sent me my camera. So he's, she's being clear uh, who he is. Many pleasures. Many pleasures is not a common expression. You're welcome. Tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Downstairs. Oh, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Welcome. So many pleasures is not how we say it in English. We say many thanks. Like still, it's not, um, it's English, but it's, I don't say many thanks. It's not common for me to say that. I would just say, thank you so much. Like, he oh my God. Nice to meet you. I appreciate teacher. it. Sorry? It's nice to meet you. Uh, no, meeting is when you see someone, like you can see them. So it's so nice of you is another not nice way to say that. So nice of you. I am Nassim. What's your name? I'm Dickerson. I waited for your call. Thank you for calling me. Yeah, good. So I waited for your call. Again, very formal. Thank you. Maybe it's so glad. So glad you called me is a bit more casual so glad you called me you need to go okay see ya i'll check your writing tomorrow okay see you um so i'm dickerson i waited for your call so glad you called me is a bit more casual common expression coincidentally i wanted to know who you were thanks for the camera i might take off thanks just uh coincidentally i wanted to know who you were the man says, did you take a picture of me sleeping? I'm sorry. Yes. So I think, again, you must have a yes. If someone asks you a question, yes, no. So I'm sorry. Yes. I just thought it was a good idea. It's not a good time. I thought it was a good idea. Man, don't worry. And the photography is good. Um, no, don't worry. The f it's a good picture. It's a good picture. So that's really nice. I like how he's very nice. He's saying, don't worry, it's a good picture. Would you like to go out for coffee? So we don't need to say a coffee. It's it's common to say, hey, do you want to go out for coffee? Do you want to catch up for coffee? Want to meet for coffee? Of course. Are you free on Saturday? Again, he says, of course. Let's change it to, yeah. A bit more casual, yeah. Do you want to, they're not in the same city. So I would just say, yeah, I can, I can be in 
Boston by then. They're not in the same city. He has to travel to her. So, yes, I can be in, yeah, I can be in Boston then. She says, perfect. What means of transport are you going to go on? Very formal. Doesn't sound like casual. So, perfect. How are you going to get here is a very common way to say that. So, how are you going to get here? How are you going to come here? Uh, then he can just reply on. So straight away you could say on the on a plane, on the train, on the bus, on a bicycle, on the train. And you? Not and you because she's already there. <clears throat> so on the train. And she says, okay. The man says, okay, then. So she could say, okay, great. And the man says, okay, then we can start the appointment. Very formal language. So, okay, then. Um, I think just, okay, then. I can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. I'm excited to see you. Maybe I'm, he, he can say, I'm excited to see you so okay then i'm excited to see you and she says see you on saturday take care of yourself and she's blushed again good thank you dickerson that was a very good conversation the only problem is you have to understand that he and she are in a different city okay okay teacher yeah, but very good. Um, it was a little bit too formal. It didn't sound very natural. It just it sounded like very formal, and you know, from the book, not like real people. So I changed it for you. So you should learn very good uh, English from um, from what I wrote. So try to try to speak in this way. But very, very, very good example. I like that one. So thank you for sharing. Thank you, teacher. No worries. Okay, so we'll finish here. Um, next lesson, well, is the review. <laughs> so um, we're going to um, look at the review that we did for this unit. So remember, uh, we've been talking about possessions and make sure you know how to say th th there is, there are, preposition of place, where is the noun, singular noun, plural noun, this, that, these, those. Um, make sure you know how to talk about countries and nationalities. Make sure you know how to go to a market or the mall and ask for something. And the price, you know how to say, uh, you know, $7.20. Um, make sure you know how to write an advertisement. And, yes, we'll do all of that little bit of grammar um, next uh, tomorrow before the test. See you so, tomorrow for the last test. Oh, I know. It will be your last class with me, but <laughs> that's okay. So, yes, see you tomorrow <laughs> for your last class. But, Eloise, you will be here for a few yeah, see ya. Bye, teacher. See you. Bye. Good evening, you. teacher. Bye. Good night. Good night. Yes, same to you guys. Good night. Bye.